Frank Xavier, or Francis Xavier, which was my artist name. Also do stuff under the name The Fingerprints with uh, Angus Grusman, Gus the Hood Rat. And I am one third of a band called Infusion and one fourth owner of the record company, Matoric. Um, well, you guys are going to come and check out uh, Matoric headquarters and um, the, the studio that my, myself and Cosmonaut 61 own. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, so I'm going to try to go through the vast amount of uh, gear that we have in this room and slowly pull out a few things and tell you what they are. Our Yamaha DX7, FM digital synthesis, you probably know it as the FM8 if you're a software enthusiast. A Poly 61, the digital version of uh, a Poly 6, and it was also Korg's answer to the Roland Juno 106, which is uh, over here actually. This is the HS60, which is uh, a Juno 106, but it has home built speakers. So you can imagine kids jamming out of this and having a listen to uh, things come out on the, on the speakers instead. <laughs> The uh, Pog 61 was uh, Korg's way of competing with that guy. And then we've got uh, the uh, Nord stage over here, which is uh, actually not ours, but we're just babysitting it. Um, some rack mounting gear. So um, got, got an Ovation base station because I had a CV in and, and ins, ins and outs as well. So I could control a lot of my analog gear, a rack mount, uh, DX100 and a Cosimini Techno Box, which was like a sample based rave machine in the 90s. And then uh, this is the K5000's Kawhi's attempt of doing something really wacky with added, additive and FM synthesis, which failed completely. But that's why I like it so much, is because it was so unusable to um, your yeah, average punter that made this uh, different on its own. And then we've got the Waldorf XT. So I've always Love the Waldorf stuff and I needed to have something in here and this is the one I chose. Um, good additive synthesis kind of uh, synth wavetable so I can add all different waveforms together and create some crazy stuff. Um, very good on industrial sounds like Nine Inch Nails and bands like that. Love that sort of synth because it's really dark and industrial and quite harsh. Monitoring on um, some focals, CMS 65s, which are pretty good. Wouldn't mind having the sub with that. Um, and it's got a 303 just casually sitting there on top of my laptop. Uh, and uh, over here, we've got um, Roland SH101. It's the simplest synth, synth you could possibly buy. Uh, my baby Roland TR808, the beast. Couldn't get hold of the mini Moog, so, uh, but I got the Voyager instead, which is same thing, but has patches. Got an, an MS-10 here, really good, like the SH-101, simple monophonic synthesizer, simply simple one oscillator, good for bass sounds. Um, a little bit of uh, outboard gear here, which I'll probably show you later, which is just a two-channel compressor EQ tube unit. And I've got a, an, an ETR just sitting under there, which is just a preamp. I've got this Italian Kruma Stratus. Uh, I've got here a Kawhi SX240. Don't really know much about it because it's uh, Pat and Andrews and the Lost Valentino machine. I think they told me that they were touring around the world with this thing and I'm surprised it's still working it's so heavy. I don't, know, I don't know how they moved it around. Tape Echo, um, this is the R301. So it's got chorus um, on top of the usual RE201 uh, tape delay. Uh, the Korg MS20, um, which is I don't know, every indie kid's dream, you know? It looks so good on stage when you're playing it. Uh, sounds great. I'm personally not a big fan of it, but, <laughs> but it's, uh, it's a good synth. It's a, a two oscillator version of the MS-10. We just showed you before and lots of kind of patching, routing going on here. One of my pride and joys, uh, my Arp Odyssey, which is the Mark I Arp Odyssey. So it was like 1978 or something, I can't remember. But basically when 
ARP made their first synthesizer, live synthesizer, and believe it or not, um, Led Zeppelin and Black Sabbath and bands like that used the ARP Odyssey. Um, it came in white, and then the band started telling the manufacturers that they couldn't see any of the knobs or any of the, the writing on the synth because of the lights coming down on a white synth, so they changed it to black. And this was a version one, and then after the version one, they brought out about four different versions of it. Uh, personally, the version one is my favorite. Um, a little bit dirtier. And then I've got here a Roland SH2, which is my favorite bass synth. Just amazing. Uh, over here, I've got a Roland TR-909. You probably know about those already. The House Machine from Hell. Uh, another 303, but this is Andrew and Pat's, but mine sounds better. Uh, <laughs> Over here is just a, a Kenton Pro converter, so that converts MIDI signals in the digital realm into analog sy signals to control some of this old gear. That was a major drawback about having some of these old synths that you didn't have a lot of ways of controlling them like you do now. <clears throat> anyway, heading down to my rack, not a lot in there, but um, I've got a patch bay so I can patch in all my synths to uh, different effects units or into my uh, logical Ableton. Um, very, very handy if you've got more than three or four synths. And then over here, I've just got a mixer so I can hear uh, a Neve 8816. So I can just hear, and we, if I want to come in and jam with other people, everything's going on at once. So we're all jamming together and I can record that onto my, into my Fireface RME, um, which is an 88 channel audio interface. Recommend it. Um, it's like the, the minimum that I would accept quality wise in when it comes to recording audio. Uh, and then just down on the floor is a CE1 chorus pedal, which is uh, probably the chorus pedal that every chorus pedal is um, modeled on. And then over here, you've got the Poly 6, which I said before was the, the younger brother of the Poly 61. It was analog in its oscillators and filter, whereas the 61 then moved on. They went to digital um, controlled oscillators. And then underneath that is an old Yamaha CS15D. Um, looks pretty sweet. Um, so we've got a Juno 106, uh, sorry, Juno 6, which is the baby brother of the 106. Then again, the 106 is basically a 6 that's midied, but the 6 sounds so much better because it has um, better oscillators and it has an analog filter, whereas, uh, well, that has an analog filter, but different chips. It's all in the chips, but the 6 sounds a, a, a lot, a lot better than the 106. One of my underestimated favorites, Jupiter 6, I have lots of people saying, yeah, I don't like the Jupiter 6, but because they always compare it to a Jupiter 4 or a Jupiter 8, different beast altogether. Can't compare the two. This thing just does other things that the 8 can't do and vice versa. I love it. And then I've got some basic um, outboard. So I kind of just picked a few of my favorites that I, that I want to use and um, so it doesn't take up much room, but it's an Eventide H3000. So these are amazing for pitch shifting and chorusing. Uh, and then I've got another patch bay to patch all the effects in to a uh, mixer that's on the floor. So that's my effects mixer. Um, and then I've got a, a Roland vocoder. Love the vocoder. Um, sounds amazing. Anyway, we'll move over to this side <laughs> of the room. I've got myself a sequential circuits drum tracks. Um, so probably would hear a lot of those sounds on old Prince records and things like that. Um, and usually a Lindrum would be here, but I've lent it to someone. You guys lent it. <laughs> <laughs> Over here are a couple of filter boxes. So they're just um, just analog filter, filter boxes, lots of kind of weird things you can do, throw LFOs on your filters. So just as you have LFOs in your plugins, these were just analog versions of that. And the Muga Fuga pedal over there, and then behind here I've got a whole one of these mics. Got just a whole random bunch of pedals and a whole box full of pedals somewhere around. Um, and down here I've got a uh, JX8P, really good for 90s sounds. That whole, whole kind of classic hip house and inner city time in the 90s. Really good synth. Uh, Jupiter 4, as analog as they come, they sound amazing a CS30 down there and that is just 
I can't actually describe that. This is the one synth that doesn't make any sense. It's just the signal paths and the way the um, routing is set up is ridiculous. Like you have to actually, I mean, you can work it out, but you really have to get into a manual and see how they actually thought about, uh, how they thought about building that thing. But it's amazing. It's got like a, a analog sequencer on it, a, a step analog sequencer, but it doesn't have you can't really sync it with anything. It doesn't have any MIDI or anything, so it's really hard to use. You've got to manually get it in time. Um, and that's pretty much in this room. I've got a few things lying around. I've got a Prophet 5 lying around, a SH7 that's still getting fixed, and a Russian Polyvox in the other room. But yeah, that's, that, that's it.